do you believe in ripoffs? Well, you'd better, because it's time to look at the classic Tangled ripoff, Tangled Up. Though, the movie on this disc originally came out 19 years before Tangled. Yes, it's time to look at the tale of misleading covers, which comes to us from... Uh... Somewhere back there. Uh, Great Britain. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of funny when movies that weren't originally Disney cash-ins kind of get turned into one later, which is of course the case for Britannica's Rapunzel getting released on DVD later as Tangled Up. In 2012, a company called Brightspark Productions released a few cartoons with exceedingly blatant Disney rip-off covers. Some of these movies, like the Video Brinkato ones, kind of fit the rip-off covers they were given by Brightspark. But of course, Rapunzel from the Encyclopedia Britannica Tales Around the World series came out way before Disney's take on the tale. And Brave-er has nothing even remotely to do with its rip-off cover, as it's really a movie called A Fairy Tale Christmas. Bright Spark, when commenting on this, said that they didn't think anyone would confuse their movies with the Disney ones, and any similarities were accidental. You buying that? Well, Disney didn't buy it, and they ended up getting all legal on Brightspark, which ended with them ceasing all their children's animation releases, recalling a bunch of the DVDs, and having a bunch of the DVD stock destroyed. This whole ordeal ended up costing Brightspark about 70,000 pounds, so this attempt to cash in just went slightly south. Brightspark still stayed in business until 2016, it seems, but I think just kind of barely, and their website is as dead as their company probably pretty much was after this whole fiasco. When their website was up, it was never updated once for the almost nine years it was online, so that's impressive, I guess. Now, the actual Tangled Up DVD doesn't have any specialized menus made for it or anything. It's still got the Britannica's Fairy Tales from Around the World logo, which is what they started calling the series during later DVD releases in 2005. There's even a bumper still on here listing the 2005 date for the DVD development. And despite the Tangled Up DVD also having Britannica's Hansel and Gretel story and its variants on here, they don't really highlight that fact. I wonder why they're kind of shying away from the fact that there's actually two movies on here. I mean, it's not like Brightspark was trying to fool us into thinking that this was Tangled or anything. They do say, as well as Rapunzel, there are some other incredible stories of princesses locked in towers and witched witches. Witched witches. Good one, Tangled Up. This is a DVD the family will treasure and look forward to enjoying again and again. Good one, Tangled Up. Now, the original VHS version of this movie is where the excitement clearly is. Well, it's where Pat Morita is, anyway. Like I mentioned in the Britannica Beauty and the Beast video, later releases of the Whatever Tales from Britannica waxed off the Morita, so instead of him introing the stories, it just flows right past the Morita purple space castle world right into the title, where a narrator gives a brief setup in a freeze frame on the title card. This is the story of Rapunzel, a German folktale from the Middle Ages recorded in the 19th century by the Brothers Grimm. Wow, I hate that. The DVD version also has a few other odd quirks about it compared to the original VHS. It starts the intro after the Britannica Tales Around the World title comes up, probably because they changed the title, but the credits actually give us yet another title variant for this series. Familiar Tales Around the World. Did Britannica just have a bet with someone about how many times they could do slight variants of this series? So we had the original Tales Around the World, then one called As Told Around the World, which still had the Pat Morita segments intact, it seems. Then we have the releases that are just the main title plus other stories. Then we got to Fairy Tales from Around the World, then last and certainly least, Familiar Tales Around the World. This is the only picture I could find of the Britannica series labeled that, and it's 
painfully plain. It just kind of looks like a blank VHS tape. My best guess with that VHS is it was just meant for play in like libraries or schools or something. It's never out for retail with that nothing cover. Well, I sure hope not anyway. Another bizarre thing about the DVD version is they run the credits after the main story. So after Rapunzel and Hansel and Gretel, you get the credits, the intro plays again, then you get the two other similar stories from other parts around the world. I don't know why they thought that was necessary. It just drags things out like an internet reviewer blabbing on about minute variations. So of course the main reason I got the VHS version was for Pat Morita, and I was thinking I'd use the DVD version for the cartoon footage, but guess what? The VHS rip is actually clearer than the DVD. How sad is that? In fact, there's one spot on the DVD that has a weird distortion going on near the bottom of the screen, which doesn't happen on the VHS. Well, you're just good for nothing, besides name value. Do you believe in magic? Oh, great. Pat Morita's sold out to Big Mac. Well, these days, most people don't believe in magic. Yeah, the magic of life really is dead. Bring on that sweet depression. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> And in Germany, they tell a story about a girl who was stolen by magic and locked away where no one could find her. Yep, she just stayed in a tower forever and no one found her. The end. Though it was Penis Tower, so it's possible Rapunzel might have been happy with that. It tells of an expectant mother who craves a vegetable grown in a witch's garden and the very high price her daughter must pay for her mother's craving. Yeah, how come no versions of Rapunzel have her seeking out revenge on her vegetable-crazed mother? So it was a special occasion indeed when the farmer's wife gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. Well, I'm glad old man Dilbert here waited until he was 70 to have a child. To celebrate, the farmer's wife wished to have a feast. If you could get me some fresh bellflower root from that lovely garden next door. The farmer agreed. The garden belonged to a witch of great might. Well, once again, the Rapunzel parents are just jerks and could just ask the witch to buy or possibly trade for some vegetables out of her garden instead of stealing. I mean, the stupid old farmer must produce something out of his farm. It was the farmer's wife cradling her newborn baby in her arms. How dare you! <gasps> and what have we here? My husband came into your garden because I begged him to. But the witch hardly seemed to hear what she said. The haggard old woman could not take her eyes off the beautiful newborn child. You see, the witch wasn't allowed to live within 300 feet of children, so she was going to have to move. You want something from my garden? I might like something from yours, Nespa. You. You may have all the fruit of my garden you wish, if. You give to me your beautiful little daughter. They granted a request. Pfft, well, that was easy. You know, I don't think they really wanted that baby. <laughs> the old witch was beside herself with joy. Until it came time to change diapers. Then she realized she had just made a huge mistake. And so determined to keep the child's love all to herself that she shut her up in a lofty tower deep in the wilderness. That's gonna make getting a babysitter real inconvenient there, Philly witchy. Also, I think you should have more than enough room over at your castle to raise the brat. Anyway, to make a long story short, Santa killed her. I mean, Rapunzel grew up. And I kind of wonder what the bathroom situation is in Rapunzel's tower. Like, is the whole bottom of that thing filled up with waste? That thing's got to be like a giant stink bomb. And does Rapunzel have a shower or bath or anything in there? If the feces doesn't make you gag, the B.O. will. And Rapunzel grew into a very beautiful young lady. Did she really, though? The witch had become so old and decrepit that she could no longer fly to the top of the tower. Well, I tell you, not being able to fly really is a sign you're getting older. Then Rapunzel had to let down the long golden tresses of her hair so that the witch could climb up to her. Well, there's a twist no one saw coming. 
And I gotta say, why was the witch so excited about having a daughter anyway? Doesn't seem like she's getting a whole lot out of this. It's just like a super inconvenient pet that resents you because you locked them up in a tower for some reason. And Rapunzel grew even more beautiful. Jeez, get a room with her then, narrator. To lift her spirits, she sometimes sang to herself. No greater song to sing than a barely audible The king's son was riding through the wood. It was the most beautiful music that he had ever heard. Because it was the only music he had ever heard. But shortly after that, the prince was given an album and realized what music was supposed to sound like and resented Rapunzel's repugnant tunes. And he followed it deep into the forest until he came upon a large tower. You mean he realized the singing was coming from the only structure in sight? Wow, this is a real advancement in Rapunzel princes. He was amazed when he saw the old witch hobble up to the tower. Wow! Hobbling! Amazing! And then the witch saw him blatantly waiting out in the open. Oh wait, no, that'd make too much sense. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair! Well, that sure sounds like mom. I'm sure I won't be surprised at all by my guest. Cheerio! Ah! <laughs> oh yes, I get that a lot. Sorry if I gave you a start, old girl. Is it you better get out of here. If my ma knew you were here, there'd be an awful fuss. Uh, why? Doesn't your mother want you to move out? I can't imagine having to feed you and clean your poop out of the towers particularly pleasant for her. Then I shall come to see you in the night. Okay. Until one fateful night when the prince stayed a little too long. Oh no, they're not gonna do the repregnant twist, are they? Rapunzel! You got some splaining to do or something? I got loads of friends. The sunshine, the leaves, the raindrops, the prince, the prince. Ooh, what a man. L O L. The witch is upset because I guess she's the only one allowed to get love from the stinky woman in the tower. Mama, I can't help but I love it. I'll show you what love is. Oh, good, because I want to know what love is. Rapunzel's golden hair tumbled down. Ultra Combo! So they decide to do the prince gets blinded from his fall from the tower in this version, but instead of having his eyes scratched from a bush, it's just his hat went over his eyes and he's an idiot. Oh, uh, that's a funny twist if you like insulting your audience. In her eagerness for revenge, however, the witch had imprisoned herself in the tower. Well, except for this one frame where the cell was misaligned and I guess she was just cut in half. Though that probably is a much nicer death than choking in Rapunzel's stink tower. The idiocy continues as the Bozo Prince never took his hat off and wanders around aimlessly trying to find Rapunzel. And once he does, we see Rapunzel must have had a hairdresser near her little cottage because it probably would have grown out some by now. He restored his sight and their hearts overflowed with joy. And their brains overflowed with nothing. Also, Rapunzel's parents died alone and unloved because they were horrible people. What makes a story a Rapunzel story? Having Rapunzel in it. One thing that's not so important is Rapunzel's long, long hair. You see, people added the long hair to Rapunzel's stories about a hundred years ago. So the next version of Rapunzel is the one from Malta called Fenchelchin. I noticed Pat Morita never actually said the word Fenchelchin. He probably didn't want to get actually in the comments of the VHS. I guess Fenchelchin isn't talked about a whole lot, at least not in English, as the first things that come up when searching for it are about Britannica's tales around the world. A woman was expecting a child. All she wanted to eat was fennel. Really, these are the stories of the vegetable-crazed pregnant women. First, she ate all the fennel from her garden. Mmm, seems excessive. Then, she stole fennel from the garden next door. Seems criminal. The trouble was, she was stealing from a witch. No, I do believe the problem was that she stole from her neighbor at all. To catch the fennel thief, 
The witch turned herself into a sprig of fennel. I kind of feel like the fennel trail should be fairly easy to follow. This seems highly unnecessary. Join me, Link, and I will make your face the greatest in Koridai, or else you will die. And, oh, up popped the witch. You dare bring light to my lair? You must die! <laughs> You promise to give me your child when it reaches the age of 12. I'll spare your life. Eh, gotta respect the Fenchelchen witch. She's making sure she gets the kid well after the dirty diapers phase. Again, though, it's hard to feel bad for this stupid woman. She stole from this witch for no good reason. She even had her own fennel supply she could have kept going if she wasn't such a mad fennel fiend. Can't tell you how many mad fennel fiends I've met over the years. A few days later, the woman had a baby girl. She named her Fenchochen. Cause they always gotta be naming their babies after plants. Real one-track minds. If only this woman could have gotten to vegetable rehab a little sooner. Twelve years passed, and Fenchochen grew more beautiful every day. Am I seeing the same things as these narrators are? Her mother never told her that she was promised to a witch. The witch turned herself into a giant crow. She flew down, grabbed oh. Fenchelchen, and carried her away. Yes, that's one way to collect. The witch took Fenchelchen to a lonely tower. It had no door and no stairs, and only one window. Fenchelchen made a home in this tower. Well, I suppose Fenchelchen didn't have much choice to do otherwise. As Fenchelchen grew up, the witch taught her many magic tricks. Wow, Fenchelchen got really spoiled compared to stupid Rapunzel. And really, this witch is a way cooler mother than the woman who has to stay on the run because of her fennel debts. I kind of wonder, though, about her turning inanimate objects into living creatures. You shouldn't just be creating life all willy-nilly, Fenchelchen. She had fun. Other times, she was lonely. Yeah, well, we all are at times, and the rest of us don't have magic, so cram it, Fenchelchen! Fenchelchen saw a handsome youth. Did she, though? I can't imagine she got a good look at what this guy really looks like at that distance. He climbed up to see who lived there. Well, geez, we never need Rapunzel's stupid hair rope, then. Just climb up. <gasps> Inappropriate. He fell madly in love with her. The key word here being mad. They held hands and gazed into each other's eyes, and hours passed. Gee, it sure is boring around here. Oh, the witch! Oh, you must hide! It'd be nice if these stories gave us any reason why the witch never wants their tower girls to find anyone and move out. Anyway, this is really the time where you truly realize how ugly the jumpy face animations are and hope the middle story is kind of quick. A cookie! A cookie? Hey. She's turned him into a real ginger dead man. <laughs> Okay, where's your boyfriend? Ah, the witch just knew immediately. Fenchelchin's really bad at this. What a nice, big cookie. Can't believe the witch knew there was something up with the cookie that had eyeballs. Plus, I assume the only cookies Fenchelchin would have around her tower would have to have been brought by the witch, so... I think I'll just take a bite. <sighs> it was stale. It, it was no good to eat. I want that cookie! Oh. Me think you have problem. So, I really wonder why Fenchelchin was awarded the Iron Cross. Uh. Fenchelchin turns her boyfriend into a bonnet next, but of course, what witch can resist beating a bonnet on a table? The prince died shortly after due to internal injuries. I'm 
I'm going to burn this log. How does the witch immediately keep realizing what object the prince is? It's almost like there's an obvious tell or something. She turned herself into an eagle. So, ever since Fenchelchin's learned magic, she's had an easy way to escape the tower if she really wanted. She took the log in one tower and three balls of magic yarn in the other. Yeah, what kind of good witch mother doesn't lock her adopted daughter up in a tower with some magic yarn balls? Really though, she probably shouldn't have given Fenchelchin those magic yarn balls. Seems like a bit of a misstep on the witch's part. The witch changed into a gigantic lion. Ah, I tell ya, there's some you don't see every day. She threw the green ball of yarn at the lion, and it turned into a forest. <laughs> So the witch just turns into a bird as well? Nah, that'd make too much sense. So the witch turned herself into a huge monkey. Yeah, yeah, the obvious solution. Fenchelchen threw down the blue ball of yarn and it turned into an ocean. Fenchelchen's really gotta be screwing up some people's lives down there. The witch turned herself into a giant fish. Ah, yes, fish are famously known for hunting birds. Good call. But actually, Faithless, there is a fish that does- Yup. So, time to use the red yarn, which, yeah, of course, it's fire. The witch, still a fish, swam right into the fire. And that was the end of the witch. How many did Fenchelchin murder with her fire yarn? Thank goodness our story has a happy ending. Is that a happy ending? Does Fenchelchin feel nothing about killing her adoptive mother? I mean, besides being, you know, a bit strict, she did teach Fenchelchin some rather dope tricks. Seriously, the Fenchelchin witch seems like a really cool mother. I mean, she still locked her daughter up in a tower, but hey, she taught her magic. Though it seems like she probably shouldn't have. Anyway, Fenchelchin and Lord Bullcut didn't work out as they found out they had nothing in common. That youth never had any fights with Fenchelchin. You just don't argue with someone who can turn you into a cookie. Oh, Fenchelchin's a monster who turns people into cookies. Happy ending! The person who locks up the girl doesn't have to be a woman doesn't even have to be a bad person. People tell the story about King Solomon, about as good a man as you can find, and what happened when he locked up his girl in a tower. Yeah, sometimes good people lock their daughters up in towers. One day he happened to be talking to an eagle. As you do. You see, he knew how to speak the language of birds. You are all weirdos. Ugh. And that eagle told him his daughter was going to marry a poor man. Didn't know eagles had gossip from the future. Gotta learn that bird language. Ah, ah yes. Ah! King Solomon's most famous quote. By the way, the birds got this future gossip in the original version of the story by flying really close to heaven, because I guess they can do that. Anyway, to avoid the poor getting into your family, sometimes you gotta spend a lot of money making a tower on an island to lock your daughter up in until she gets marrying underneath her class out of her system. Reuben was so smart that he was the only other person beside King Solomon who could speak the language of birds. Speaking bird. It's a lost start. Oh, lovers on the moon. That eagle picked up Reuben and carried him high into the air. And that eagle flew right up to the tower that King Solomon built. Oh, that eagle is a real matchmaker, but I guess in the original version of the story, the poor man was on a journey when it got really cold, so he decided to sleep it off inside an ox carcass. And he thought they smelled bad on the outside. A giant bird decided to grab this free lunch and flew over with it to the tower to eat, and the poor man met his future wife while he is covered in ox blood. 
Hard not to have love at first sight covered in ox blood, right? The next morning, <gasps> Kaziah found a handsome young man in her tower. Here he's just staring at her sleeping, which is also kind of creepy. Instantly, Kaziah and Reuben fell in love. But a stranger suddenly being in your room perving on you as you sleep isn't creepy according to this cartoon. They married themselves with the angels as witnesses. Well, geez, what is even the point of getting bird spoilers? King Solomon sailed to the tower to bring his daughter home. He saw a poor man inside the tower, and the man was holding a baby boy. King Solomon said, Oh, still not as good as Solomon's other quote. And his hair turned white. I have seen shit that'll turn you white. Solomon was a wise man, and pretty soon he saw how learned Reuben was. Oh, so it wasn't a big deal at all, and they just bonded over their bird talk. What a story, and a waste of a tower. I gotta say, too, I really don't care for the overly detailed and super stiff animation style of this one. The faces get super creepy looking, too. But despite finding some of the animation styles kind of ugly, I do rather appreciate what they do on these Britannica Tales Around the World videos. I do find it interesting that they find worldly variations of these tales, especially considering that they found some that haven't even been discussed in English all that much, like Fenchelchen. Even the daughter in the tower story of Solomon seems to be one of his stories that's not talked about as often. I don't know if I believe in magic, but I do believe in growing up. <laughs> Did Pat Morita just not want to say he believed in magic? After all, I did it myself. Well, I'm not really sure if I believe in growing up either, because I didn't do that myself. Also, I'm not really sure what growing up has to do with being locked in a tower. What's your opinion about? Ah! This hilarious joke was brought to you by me, being an idiot.